right? So everyone, this is Manohar Goli, and I'm co-founder and VP of engineering at Toronto. Hey, MG, one uh, minute. Uh, Meghna, do you, have you started recording? Sorry. Okay, cool. Sorry. Yes, Go ahead. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, so we uh, we started off this company in 2014, and uh, we built this from two people all the way to like you know a good solid 35 on uh, right now. And uh, uh, happy to say that Sajit is part of our a very young and buzzing team uh, back in India. All right, so I wouldn't I want to take much time about it. So this is pretty much gives a gist of what we are in the selective stock clients. Pretty much, I would say and we have our offices both here in the US and in India. All right, so I'll quickly jump to um, agenda here. This is what we are talking about today. Um, you know, pretty much everything Confluence, we're trying to see uh, what spaces are, what pages are, what templates are, and then we try and play on with some macros, you know, some of the ones which I pretty much use on a daily basis to build, um, you know, our project documentation, our customer documentation, as well as delivery documentation. And then we'll talk about very key aspects, like obviously we want to make sure that, you know, we're putting important content into our confluence. We want to make sure that, you know, we know exactly what's its visibility is and uh, who can access it. And then we'll just talk about briefly about, you know, the calendars um, and then we would, you know, show how exactly this tool fits into the whole bigger scheme of uh, the core tool from Atlassian, which is Jira. And then we will talk about a couple of options on how it could be purchased it or it could be hosted and then we can go into a QA. All right. So just a quick brief, right, you know, uh, what Confluence uh, is all about. So it's, it's everybody, uh, you know, when you talk about Confluence, we say it's a wiki tool and a documentation space. You know, that's a pretty wide, um, you know, uh, you know, word or terminology to use. But, you know, the way I kind of, you know, tell any of our clients is a confluence, it's more like kind of a book. You know, that's what I tell, like, you know, kind of, you know, if they are using it for, you know, a specific purpose, you know, then you can call it as a, a book with that particular content. That's how I see. And, uh, you know, with what I've seen in like last four or five years, you know, our clients have used confluence for numerous amount of, you know, purposes uh, across the org. Uh, you know, starting from uh, building some ideas, you know, and then converting those ideas into much more formal documentation and then handing it over to the uh, downstream team so that, you know, they can build, uh, you know, software based off of their details that's been captured in there. And the big part of uh, Confluence is the collaboration, the context collaboration. So, you know, you're eliminating, you know, those huge amount of email chains that goes on or that used to happen, you know, earlier, before we didn't have this uh, intuitive chat tools or these kind of a collaborative confluence wiki tools. So that's the big, big proponent of this one right here. So, um, you know, when we put it out there as a, as a tool, we say that it could start off with an idea from the top, like, you know, easy to use since, you know, it's an executive, you know, just put it in like a Word document and then just, you know, share it with the folks in you know, a downstream and then they can continue to collaborate on this. So we'll, we'll, we'll show you exactly, you know, a couple of things that we could do on a page, how that could become a context collaboration. And then, you know, um, you guys can see, you know, how, how easy is it to avoid emails or, you know, uh, take your attention away from the, uh, the concept of the topic that we are kind of really collaborating with, right? Apart from that, there are a few obvious reasons why uh, a lot of companies take confluence alongside Jira. You know, Jira is, is one of the most popular tools of Atlassian, and it's it's the leader in its in its space where you know agile and uh, service management comes, right? So since it's a it's a same uh, product from the same uh, company, this uh, integration is seamless, right? You know, you want you want to kind of you know put everything into confluence and call it as a knowledge base, and then you link it with the service desk, it becomes a knowledge base for your customers. If you're if you're putting into a uh, you know, uh, software project space and then just, you know, link it with your story that becomes, uh, you know, uh, a page for your, you know, software teams. So there is numerous ways to do it. And the integration is pretty straightforward and there is no huge uh, effort there to integrate these two tools, right? And, you know, you talk about, you know, being able to, you know, start writing a book, right? You know, you want to continue to write. So that's how the conference is. Once you create a space, put it out there for teams, teams would start owning it and then start creating numerous amount of pages. Or the classic examples is weekly status meetings. You know, you want to kind of, you know, do the do a one page for every status meeting or one page for every 
uh, you know, a key meeting, then you can think about how many pages we can create in a year itself, right? So there's no such limitations and you've got a good solid hierarchy built into it. You can just play around, drag and drop those things. And then key thing, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you're continuing to change your page. You want to be able to go back and see uh, what was there uh, a year ago, if you would like to, right? So the confluence does store history pretty solid. You know, anything you change, it's captured, it has a history, right? And the powerful permissions, you know, you know, as I mentioned, you know, you're starting to put key content into your confluence spaces. You want to make sure that, you know, every page or a space is something you want to share with the right set of people. So you know that you were confident that the right set of people are accessing that information, both inside the company and outside of the company, all right? And the rest is all kind of, you know, uh, nuts and bolts that goes into it uh, pretty much, uh, I would say. At the left bottom, you can see, like, you know, we, we kind of put some uh, usable kind of preferences on, you know, how people use it for key intranet, meeting minutes, milestones, and gang charts, and then, you know, ID cell service, decision docs, a data of specs, related project or, you know, a product, and then numerous other standard things uh, the business does, like to-do list and, you know, feedback forms, um, you know, any content that you want to continue to build on, uh, you know, from the previous researches that we've been doing about a product or a project or, you know, whatnot, right? So uh, I'll take a pause here real quick before I jump into the tool. Um, any, any, any questions? Do we have any questions, Sajid? Are we good to go to tool? All right. No questions yet, MG. Perfect. Yeah, I, I, you know, pre-conference is one of those tools like so many people have been using. So I guess, you know, they're pretty uh, aware of this basic stuff. So <clears throat> let's, let's jump in this tool and see <clears throat> what people have to say. All right. All right so I'm going to use uh, Confluence Cloud um, as a demo because this is the this is available instance for me, uh, for my team. So uh, if somebody uh, been using server, you know, there could be slight difference in, in the UI, but, you know, do stop us and check with us, you know, if something is not kind of, you know, correlating to what you know or, you know, what you are seeing is not something you already know about, okay? So this is a Confluence Cloud. Um, <clears throat> you can see it, it resembles pretty much, you know, if you go, go, go to any other clashing tool, like, you know, start assembling, it remains the same. But the key differentiator is obviously the, um, you know, the top menu, right? So, you know, evidently, you know, you can see the spaces right here. So, you know, sometimes you can, um, a lot of people do give a pretty good attention to the dashboard or the landing page, which could give you a, a quick uh, access to some of the uh, pages or, you know, some of the work that you've been doing, like, you know, the pages that you've been creating and anything that you started and then you left without finishing it. And then, you know, all your favorite pages in one place, right? You know, uh, anything that, you know, you want to kind of access it over and over and again. So this is a good starting place, which, you know, we tend to forget over a period of time because we start going into the spaces directly. But, you know, if you start using it, you know, if you haven't been using it, you know, this is one of these spaces where you always should be looking for more and more. All right. So as I again mentioned before, Confluence is more like kind of a book. It has a reference uh, uh, analogy that I, if I have to take. You know, it has more, every book has a chapters and the chapters has, you know, uh, sub models in it. Just like that, Confluence also has spaces. Spaces, again, it's, it's like you can consider it equate, it's like more of a chapters, you know, in a book, right? So in, in more technical terms, you know, a, con a Confluence space is a, is a combination of spaces. You know, it's a, it's a combination of numerous amount of space, the pages that you want to collect together, you know, for a very particular purpose. So here we can see, you know, I created some standard pages in here, <clears throat> which is a, is a standard list. You know, on the C, this is a combination of it and, you know, demo page is what it is. So when you click on a page, a sp space link, you can just go to the space button right here. Any space that you have access to, you know, will be showing up here. Again, when I say access, that's what it is, right? You know, you don't want every space to be available for everybody across the organization. So when you log in, you will only see the context in which you are logging in, right? So that, that's your access level to those set of spaces. So it shows, you know, the one that we are actively on and then, you know, all the standard pages, all, all the, you know, once the favorites that we mark because we know that we would be looking for them right away. And then the ones that we recently visited, uh, you know, in, in the previous login or in, in the previous instance, 
And then if you want to go, go back and see what are the other spaces that we can access, you can click on view all spaces in here, and then you can, that will show pretty much entire list of things that you have. And on the, on the, if you, if you observe, there are few aspects that strikes you like, you know, categories and, you know, the options for you to uh, kind of, you know, mark them as a favorite. Categories is a key, key, key aspect whenever you are starting to build your confluence, you know, it is very important that we put out the category out there so that, you know, we are organizing our spaces effectively. So we, we tell our customers, do not let a space to be created without a category. You know, we definitely want every every space to have one. Right? The, the, the reason why it is because, you know, you can easily drill down into that particular category, you know, right away. And then, you know, you can start uh, looking at, you know, some of the some of the spaces right in here. So that's that's uh, that's the key aspects of um, you know categories uh, I would say. So let me go back to the uh, product dev space in here. <clears throat> All right. So let's let's take a look at the uh, the left uh, menu, the left navigation menu. I would say. So the moment you you click on and join join into space or you know you access a space, the very first page that you would do is overview page right you know this is where you kind of give a gist of uh, what this space is all about like kind of you know uh, a hint text or an image you know that you want to use and then you know you can uh, you can particularly put a status of you know what's going on with this particular stuff and you know uh, use some of the macros to intuitively provide uh, information that uh, you know folks would like to see on this particular uh, page like you know here i'll just simply put you know, what's the status of the overall, um, this project, and then, you know, what's the team looking like, and then what are the recent, you know, updates that have been happening in this particular space, so that, you know, people can see uh, whatever that is. And on the right top corner, you can see that, you know, there are some options in here, you know, edit. It's, it's again, you know, I'll, I'll go into the pages and we'll talk about edit. And this is one of the key aspects of, um, you know, making sure that the notifications are going out appropriately to the folks and also you're making sure that you know any changes that we're making on a conference page is propagating uh, to kind of you know uh, changes are being passed on to the team uh, whoever needs to know about it so watching is very critical aspect so you know you can uh, watch this single page or you can watch the entire content in this space and then you can also make sure that you know if you are somebody who owns or you know uh, a space owner you can make sure that you know you can manage all the watchers right from here as well and then share is um, you know uh, again you know you can share this across the group uh, or you know you can you know copy the link and share it with an individual in the company but again you got to make sure that you know whoever we are sharing this page with must have the right permissions to view this one all right so uh, that's with overview page and again it's not necessary that it has to always land on an overview page we can always change where uh, where we land when we kind of hit a particular space link, all right? And then on the left side, you can see that, you know, there are a few quick links in here, the space settings, we will go into that when we go to the permission side of it, and then you can add more and more uh, customization into this very specific space here. We can add, you know, key links, calendars, blogs, you know, whatnot, all right? And then you can see here, right here, um, we can also add shortcuts. This is a very useful, uh, one, which is like, you know, if you're linking your space with uh, external tools like Jira or, you know, uh, any other Bitbucket or any other, um, you know, internal tools or internal uh, links or external links, you can add that as a link here and you can directly access them right from the space. And it's all about, you know, the, you know, conference is all about making things accessible uh, in the context. So, you know, you just keep that in mind when we are building those spaces, right? Um, just want to take a quick pause here before I move to the pages. Any questions on the spaces? All right, let's go. None on the chat yet. Perfect, sounds good. So it looks like I'm doing a good job here. Making okay. here. All right. Pardon me, like if uh, the site is a little bit slow. Hello, hello. This is Ajit here. Yeah, uh, just take a quick So, how is this space? It's like a folder. I also see categories. Uh, categories we can group. Uh, is it like a folder only, or is it something different? No, it's 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 like kind of I would say uh, tagging. 
uh, it's more like a broader uh, broader categorization a level above it like you know you could group your spaces into each category and then you know you can quickly access them from there like you know it's it's for more for organization uh, purpose i would say okay yeah all right again if you if you want to kind of relate it to your general terms um you know i, I would say it's it's like kind of a master master folder um i would mm. say you know something like that master directory and then from there you go into all the spaces and from there you know everything is is just pretty standard under space you have multiple pages uh, kind of thing right sorry so under spaces we may have multiple pages yes. right that's correct that's correct so uh, pages can only live inside the spaces oh, okay so that, yeah yeah uh, pages are uh, components of of spaces and spaces could be organized into categories okay got it all right yeah. um, one question i have uh, how did you get this status is this something we manually put it in as in developer that's correct so that status is is something which you know we use a macro it's a, it's a it's a good question you know you saw that it's not it's not automatic as such uh, it is something which i put in manually here so you can pretty much uh, do that on any page okay thank you all right cool perfect so i'll go ahead and um, create a page and then we can show you uh, uh, we know what are the different ways or different pages that we can create here so before i go to create page um, you know over a period of time confluence uh, ui has has changed so much that you know just one of the examples that i could talk about is you can see this drag and drop option it's so intuitive right here so you can make a, a page as a child anything or you can reorder the pages right from here so two years ago you asked me this option it was not there i had to make three clicks to make that happen but right now it's all right in here and then you can see as i as i hover over each each page right here you can see i it, it gives me an option to create a child page it's smart enough right you know you, you want to it, it understands the fact that you know want to create child pages beneath an existing page but if you want to create one other master page right you know you come back to overview and then you can kind of use this button create right so the moment you hit create button it will give you an option right here with the templates and you know any other specific elements that are available in this particular space I'm wondering why this is not giving me templates okay there you go it's loading sorry all right so templates are uh, pre built uh, page formats if i may uh, say so uh you know in confluence you know you when you when you purchase a confluence it does come with a huge list of templates uh, already available you know and neatly categorized into a different aspects here you can see that you know you have each each of these showing up in here so docs and reports design specific business strategy and all the templates and you can start typing in um and then it will start you know narrowing down your search to those specific templates so it's it's a very intuitive way again this is also uh, part of the confluence uh, ui and ux rehaul which has been happening and which you know we totally love i would say you know this was in the case before it used to open a big window and then you know you could you know have to select everything up front before you land on the page so it's it's no more that particular case all right so i'll i'll go ahead and uh, you know just create Uh, if you don't want to use any of the templates you can feel free to start creating a blank page which you can see in right here you can say uh and then you know the title is is obviously it's it's a mandatory uh, it's it's what the hook for the pages so you always need to provide a title uh, before you could publish uh, any particular page and then once you uh, you know put the page you can just you know come to a you know a, a blank space in here right here you have numerous options so you can you can just put in a simple a standard you know a word word text or you know text or you know anything that you want to write into the page you can do you can copy paste into this particular page uh, you know it's it's just like any other word document the difference is obviously you know uh, you have macros and the linkings that you can do in here right so if you see on the top right here there are some rich text editor based um, options in here 
So, you know, this one right here gives us, you know, options to uh, put our text into uh, different sizes in here. So these are the only sizes that are available. So if you're just writing normal text, normal text, and the rest of all the different headings that comes up, uh, you know, in, in this uh, rich text editor. And then, you know, the standard word formatting that you could do, like bold, italicized, and then, you know, a little more additional formatting that you could do on top of that. And then this is more like kind of, you know, content aligning where you want to put your content on the page. And this is more like kind of, you know, gives you some options uh, to kind of, you know, highlight your text, whatever you're writing into this particular page. And then there are two options to kind of look, uh, add, a, add a bullet list or a, add a number list to whatever you're adding on the page. And then these are very specific to Confluence. So you can see this one, this is the uh, action item. So let me start adding each one of these so you can see how this can be used. So action item is, is nothing but uh, a simple task inside Confluence. Like, you know, you don't want to create Jira tasks for everything. Like, you know, let's say, you know, you, you are in a meeting and then you, you want to hand out certain smaller tasks, like, you know, which you want you or one of your team members to own it and come back with uh, an answer for where it or, you know, get that particular research done for the next meeting, right? So you use something called as task list and I can just put say, starts demo and then you can put an assign it to it. That means, you know, you can put at the rate and then you can add a user. So at the rate is what we would we, we would use pretty much, you know, it's like any other, um, you know, application where we use at the rates to kind of, you know, pull up a user list and then it would show all the list of users uh, that are available for me to add on this particular uh, page, right? And then I can add a due date. So you hit two uh, double forward slashes, then it will show me, um, you know, a date option and some filter results and from help desk. So I'll use the date for now. And it gives me a nice intuitive calendar and then I'll go ahead and put a due date to it. All right, so this, this becomes a task for me. I'll show exactly where to go back and find when, once I save this page. And then you keep hitting enter, you know, it, it continues to give you more and more uh, task options right here. And I just hit a back delete button, so that's gone. So now I can go back and do something else. Now I want to insert a link, right? So you can use this link option right here. Hit this, it'll right away open, open up set of pages inside Confluence, or you can add an external link right here. So I want to just go ahead and add a support link from Atlassian support, put it in here, support, and then enter. So it's a nice, um, you know, a link right here. So you click on it, it'll take you to that link. Or you can actually also uh, link and other pages inside this page or any other page from a different, uh, you know, space as well. Again, it's governed by your level of access to it. So you, you want to kind of say, okay, you know, I want to go ahead and put a demo chain in here. So this is the link it will write, I will pull it up and it will show it to us right here. So that's how the linking can be done. And then obviously big part of the documentation is in files and images. You know, we want to include files and images into our space and, you know, uh, to make sure that, you know, we can create more intuitive documentation. So hit this button right here. So you can, you know, get your documentation by connecting to a Dropbox or, you know, Google Drive, you can connect any of those things. Or you could technically, you know, use, you know, uh, GIFs, which is quite popular nowadays. Uh, but if I want to add, um, you know, something from my local computer, right? So I can always hit, you know, the upload a file thing and then it will pull up um, everything right up here. And then you can select any type of file in here and then just say upload, you know, it will just upload and then it gives me an option. Once it's uploaded, it kind of, uh, you know, shows us, it converts this blue to a gray option and then I can start selecting it. So while that uploads, I can just go ahead and, you know, start adding, um, some of the doc, you know documents in here so let that get inserted i'm going to insert this one so if you, if you look at you know it the moment i added it, it it takes its original shape now i want to kind of you know really confine it down to a smaller space right you know and then i want to move to the left of it then i move to the right of it so it's all kind of you know pretty uh you know into to uh it's say you know it wasn't like this before you know you have to drag and drop its position and everything but right now it's it's very nice and easy. It can give you, uh, uh, you know, kind of alignments, whichever you want to do. And so let me just put it in the leftmost corner and then, then enter. So I'll go back and add another file here, which I simply, you know, uploaded. This is a PPT. I'm going to insert a PPT in here, All right? So this just kind of, you know, since I'm attaching a PPT, is just like any other attachments. It doesn't have 
any um, value add to it, but I will show you exactly how you can insert uh, uh, my office office specific documentation into it in a minute. All right. And then the next option that you can see is that there are mentions and some emojis. You know, this is again the standard. You can just put it in here, you can type it in, it's no big difference, right? So next is key thing is tables. Right? You know, table is something which is a huge part of the documentation. We want to organize our content into various different tables. So the moment you hit it, it starts giving you uh, tabular options. And you know, if you want to add more columns, we'll just start giving you an option as soon as you hover on this line. Right here it gives me an option to add a column or add a row to this particular table. And then you can, you know, the moment you click this one right here, and then it gives me an option to delete it. And if you want to edit entire table, it just, you know, use this right option in here. You can, you know, get some of the options in here uh, right away, all right? And then if you see that, you know, the page, you know, you, you can ask me a question like, you know, why is that the real estate's not being used on this page? You know, you have so much space on the left and right, right? So, you know, we, we, you know, this is this is part of the newer UI that has started coming up over a period of time. We never had an option to kind of leave, you know, change the width of the page because this allows me to kind of, you know, put the content in a much more focused way. Because when we look at a page, you know, it's a natural tendency that we tend to look at right in the middle of the page, right? You know, always that's the the human tendency. So Atlassian kind of, you know, thought that's a it's a good option to give to users if you want to kind of if you don't have a a larger content to put, you can just, you know, put it in a focused area. So you can always, you know, change that with um, full width or kind of, you know, focused width. And then it's not necessary that, you know, we have to do that with each individual section. You can do it with just with the table, right? So if you want to continue to increase the table width, you can do that. And then you can just, you know, reduce it down as you want. Because, you know, sometimes the table columns could go pretty, uh, pretty, pretty large. All right, so uh, any questions before I go to um, larger set of uh, macros? Cool, perfect. So um, one question. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the table size, now you are creating the page. Once you save the page, the page may look different. With the left-hand side, you may have all the information coming in. Mm -hmm. Once you come, yeah. Will, will this fit responsive. the table? Responsive. It's all the conference pages are responsive. Okay. It suggests to the way. So you can okay. see this right here. I collapse it and it becomes big. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Perfect. So let me go, uh, go into a um, um, larger set of macros, right? So macros are, um, you know, you can call it as, uh, I would say, you know, um, the right term uh, is like, you know, to embed a different type of content into, uh, you know, the conference page, you know, just allow, allowing us to kind of add additional functionality to extend the, you know, convert a, a standard page uh, into a much more intuitive experience, right? So macros are something so that you could use. So you could use either this plus button right here or wherever you are on the page, you can just use a forward slash. Wherever you are on the page, you can use the, wherever the cursor is, you can just put the forward slash. We'll just give us the list of macros that are available on this particular ones. So there are uh, all this huge list of macros that are available by default. Like, you know, the ones that we already saw, action items, files, and the mentions and emojis, that's what we saw at the top. And then, you know, then comes, you know, much more uh, specific macros. So if you start adding more and more add-ons to the Confluence, add-ons are marketplace extended functionalities that you can add to Confluence. So every add-on vendor do develop certain macros to kind of, you know, support or, you know, make their add-ons much more uh, helpful to use, you know, or helpful to use across the board. So as and when you add more and more add-ons, you will see all those additional macros. But in this, this Confluence site, we don't have any add-ons in particular. So you can see that, you know, all these that we see in here are all default Confluence macros. So expand is something which I love tremendous. Uh, you know, expand is, is a macro that, you know, where you want to kind of write a huge content, uh, you know, into a single page, but at the same time, you don't want the page scrolling experience to be bad. Like, you know, you should be able to see everything in a single, single scan on the page, and then you want to click through 
certain aspects of that page so that you know you can read through a section that you really want and you know let me let me just just um copy certain things and then i'll just go ahead and publish it you can see that it nicely tucks in all the information inside uh, you know a link just hit this it will open up it so it's a huge huge uh, component of our documentation that we do internally because we we tend to you know uh, capture a lot of information like you know requirements you know you capture 100 requirements in a single page and you know some of the requirements could have you know much more details into it like you know uh, text into it you know an image into it a table into it you know that kind of a stuff so you know you could use macro uh, this macro you know pretty often i would say you know most of the times and then let's go to another set of uh, macros status we already saw about it code snippet is is another uh, you know very key like you know if you want to include a specific code you can always use a code snippet in here um, status you know that we we saw data again we saw decision is is also a, a pretty interesting one right you know um, this this have this is used pretty much in most of the times in uh, minutes of meetings or you know during capturing uh, meeting notes like you know you you want to kind of put some decision out there and like you know when this this actually was announced that some of this kind of macro was coming in 2017 um, uh, summit we were so excited because you know the outlook was that uh, Atlassian would provide us more uh, kind of automation, kind of an AI around this, like you know to be able to add a decision. That means you know we are we are allowing it to with the click of a button we can convert that into a Jira task or something like that for for you know for a broader tracking or something like that. But you know we are we are yet to get that. So decision is again just like a task. You add a decision. Task is something you want to do. Decision is something which we already you know talked about and finalized it. Okay. We want to kind of you know change our meeting from Monday to Wednesday, right? You know that's what we we talked about in the previous meeting. I put the decision right in here. Well, let's take a look at any other uh, interesting ones because since there's a lot of stuff. All right. So now uh, you know since since you know we saw that you can adjust the width of a page, like you know you could do a focused one or you can use a full width. Uh, you also want to kind of you know be able to slot your content into different uh, sections inside the page, right? You know you can use this uh, sections right here to kind of really do that. So you can split it into two. So what this does give us, you know, uh, it'll allow us to kind of you know technically kind of you know slot an information to be in that particular uh, space of that particular page, right? You know sometimes you want to kind of have your images on the right. And then you give the description on the left, or you put your images on the left, and you know put the description on the right, so that you know they don't kind of you know really come closer. So you can use this, and you can put an image into it, and put it into you know position it into in the center of this particular page, and that will allow us to kind of you know do that. Again, this section is just like the page. You know, inside it you can do all sorts of actions. Again, you can put another macro inside it, and then you can you can add another table inside it, so you can pretty much kind of you know do all sorts of things. So right, let me just you know add an image in here All right so it just gives me this again you can do pretty much the same um, content but it will obviously kind of you know limits you with with whatever you can do on here right and here you can just put another content uh, or you know you can just add a particular stuff in here so and then you can change these layouts so you can see here you have like five different ways of doing it sometimes you know you want to kind of put give more space to the image and give less space to the content you can just quickly switch that to immediately you know uh, update it for us right so that's another uh, you know good way of uh, formatting your page so let's look at some of the other interesting ones i'm trying to think um you know all these uh you know success success panel warning panel error panel this is like more like Kind of you know the ones you see if you have if you have observed in the beginning when i landed on my page i had this you know the screen text in here like you know you can highlight particular portion of your page with a, with some amount of information in here so you can just you know quickly convert this and write from here so you can pretty much do 
everything right right out in here. You don't even have to go back and change the type of uh, highlight panel that you want to use. So. All right, let's see what else do, 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 do. I'll talk about layouts, number list. Okay, let me talk about the, so the charts that I could use, right? Okay, all right. So the, the next key thing that we also want to know is that you can embed the content from Jira. You know, once you link, a particular confluence pay confluence uh, instance with the jira instance then you can start including uh, the content from jira right so you just start typing in jira it gives an options to do some of these things right you know uh, jira roadmaps I'll, I'll start off with jira roadmaps you know because it's, it's some of the things that we use pretty much on a regular basis i hit jira roadmap it will ask me to give me uh, a url so let me copy this url All right, there you go. So the moment I, I put the URL, it, it uh, goes back and gives me all the options uh, that are there on the target instance where we have the advanced roadmap. So if you all been following closely, uh, advanced, uh, you know, Jira roadmaps is part of the next gen project uh, feature that was rolled out last year. And then they are trying to expand this to uh, other aspects of the Jira projects as well. Right now it's with the next gen project. So you can actually, you know, start developing your Epic, you start developing your roadmaps on uh, Jira, and then you can expose this to your business users. Like, you know, one of the very reason is that, you know, a lot of times the business users wouldn't want to kind of specifically come into Jira to see what's going on, everything. You want to give a snapshot of what's going on about the project inside the conference page, or you're building a status report for a meeting, you know, you could, you know, very intuitively use this. And then again, at a click of a button, you can just go to, uh, this particular uh, Jira board directly from your conference page. So when I kind of hit publish, this is how it kind of starts looking for us. And then it's 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 the same, you know, into two as as much as it is. Right? So you can just do the drag and drop, or you know, you can just do all these sort of things. You can expand, you know, all the content in here, and you can see content in here. And if you want to kind of go to your Jira, you just you know, click on it. Go to Jira. It'll open up right there. All right. So that's that's one aspect of it. So if if you have observed, you know, just uh, you know, when I was just trying to kind of hover on this one, you know, conference is giving me some options, right? So this is the context specific uh, collaboration, I would say. Now you know you're developing a, a status report and you are working with another individual on the team. Now you know, and unfortunately. Or maybe you know, for some reason, you know, you want to add a very specific con you know comment about this one. So you can add a general comment, right? But again, you know, you may have to write a whole lot of details in that comment and which part of the section you are referring to. Rather, I might as kind of you know who are on this one right here and then say put a comment in here, right? Uh, and then just you know save. And then you can also do uh, you know whole whole lot of um, things right in here too. And then, you know, if I'm somebody who's responsible, so let me just quickly edit this one right here. Also, Sajid, so tag Sajid, and Sajid should get uh, a notification on his one right here so that, you know, he can come back here, he can, you know, give me a reply. Just save, and then he can resolve this comment. The moment he results his comment, you know, you, you don't have, uh, you know, that yellow option showing up on this particular text. Or else it'll continue to show as, um, you know, highlight. So it'll, it'll continue to continue to kind of, you know, show this highlight option, you know, since that kind of, you know, tells that something needs to be addressed, this part of the, this content needs to be addressed, right? You know, I'll just go ahead and resolve this one right here. And it's resolved. Right. So once once you do this, you can always go back and check the check the comments as well. You know, you can see here if you want to see what's what was kind of you know added and resolved. So everything is captured. So nothing is is kind of you know lost once you're resolving it as well. So you can always go back and see what was the decision taken about uh, uh, you know a collaborative comment that was added on this particular page. 
So that's one of the way. And another one is once you hoover, it will also give an option to create an issue. It's a huge, huge proponent of uh, you know the integration. So one of the use cases, you know, uh, as a, as a business analyst or a, or, a pro, or a project project manager, sometimes we tend to write all our you know stories you know into our requirements into a conference page you know because we want to use nice tabular format you want to put you know content into it you know i want and then you know allow the teams to kind of pick it up from there right so but obviously the projects cannot be run just with the conference table we want to rather put this into a task into jira so that we can run our scrums you can hit this create button it will give me an option so you know if it if it was a table it will automatically give me what part of it should be a summary what part of it should be a description you we'll carry forward you can select which project you want to do it again the project list that we see here is entirely from uh, the instance that is linked to this particular conference so i'll just put it into a demo product and then i'll just call it as an epic and then i'll just create keynotes and then you know it creates a task for me and you know, since like conference is also kind of you know weekend mode for now. So you can see here, right? You know, it, it shows me the the ID, the ticket ID that created in here, and then it shows me what's the status of it, and then you know it, it will start showing up in here once we refresh this as well. All right. So that's with the uh, comments and uh, tasks. Just want to take a quick uh, pause in here. So, do we, uh, Megna or Sajid, do we have any questions you want to take? Yes. Um, okay. Can you scroll down to Jira, please? Mm -hmm. So, is this Jira dashboard as is coming from Jira here? Yes, absolutely. So, this is the Jira roadmap that I created from here. Uh -huh. You can see this one right here. This is the roadmap uh, the, the, that I created. So you already have the roadmap in Jira, yes. you just pull it up correct. here. Yes, that's correct. So I already have this next gen project created in, in Jira, and then you know I pull it up in here. Okay, so can I bring any dashboard into here? Uh not dashboards, there, there are charts that we can bring in. Let me edit this and show you exactly what all options we have in here, right? Usually at the end of the sprint, you would like to uh, give the status report, what happened for that sprint. Mm -hmm. And we would like to bring all the metrics here. All right. So you can you can actually bring in some of the gadgets, definitely. Like, you know, you can see that, you know, when I was just doing it, you can bring in Agile Wallboard. Uh, let me see if I, I never specifically got anything Okay, version report is in here. I'm trying to see if I can do the sprint report. Yep, so you have a sprint run on gadget that you can bring uh, from, from your Jira. Okay. It kind of really manifests as I'm expecting it. Something isn't good about it. Let's see. Okay, there you go. On board. If there is any sprint available, it will show me. I don't think we have enough, you know, sprint data in there, but you can definitely bring some of the sprint information into the space, into conference page. And you can also see that categorized info, like if you click on the plus button on top, you can actually see the entire list together categorized, you know, on top where we add the macro. Sorry, okay. yeah, yeah, the plus yeah. button, yeah. So if you click on view more, yeah. So you'll see the entire list of all the options. Like if you click on external content, uh, it'll give you, you know, wherever you can pull in the information from Jira, you can look at communication. If you want navigation, if you want reporting, there's a separate header under it. So you can, you know, see that information categorized. Yeah, a lot of macros, um, you know, one one hour session isn't enough. Um, the best way, you know, to definitely would be to kind of, you know, create a cloud, free cloud instance, um, and then just, you know, start playing with it. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, just a quick question here. Hi, Vikram Ji, this side. Uh, I'm sure there will be some uh, special gadgets for the admin side versus the end user side. Is there any difference in that? 
I I don't think there is any difference. Yeah, I don't think any specific difference as such in here. But let me just uh, click on here. Not, uh, not, not that. Uh, not that. There, yeah. there is a Vikram, but the difference will come in permissions. So, like for example, okay. for an admin, you can have access to n number of projects, but a normal user might not. So the data might be different based on your permissions. Yeah, yeah. everything that we see here, irrespective of you include, uh, let's say that you know you want to include um, Jira filter, right? So you want to include a Jira filter here. I want to go to Jira and then say hit Jira. And then I want to include a particular filter in here. So let me just quickly go in here. Pull up issues. Uh, so in the meantime, I have a question for you, right? Um, if you have created uh, one uh, parent project, right? Or a kind of a page and you have subchild of it, and out of subchild, like suppose you have five subchilds and you want to restrict uh, three not to be visible to the external client. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to go to individual page and uh, give the permission or there is something where we can go in the space setting and do it. So in the space setting, you wouldn't be able to, you know, specify which children pages you can. So you can either give like, if you want somebody to have like full view, uh, you can give them the, you know, create edit permission and right. give them, make them the admin. But if you have to restrict a specific couple of pages, you'll have to go into those pages and then, you know, restrict the visibility. Okay. Yeah. Right. At, 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 a, at a space level, all you can do is whether you can allow somebody to view uh, pages in it, or you can add or delete a page or you can add or delete it. I'll, I'll go to the permission checks real quick. And then we can sure. talk about those in, in particular. But yeah, as Sajid mentioned, if you want to restrict page, it's it's more like you know it's it's kind of overrules the uh, underlying permissions and then kind of you know overrides that using the page level permissions. All right, Manu. thanks. All right, cool. So yeah, going back to that one right here, just I talked about you know all the Jira list in here. This is this list. Somebody may not see it. The reason being is because you know I might have not shared this filter with them or they don't have access to this project. So just show us like, you know, an error for them that, you know, they don't have a permission to view this. So it's again governed by the same set of permissions on Jira, uh, you know, whatever you're trying to do. So conference wouldn't just simply allow, uh, wouldn't allow a backdoor as such, you know, if you don't use it as an have permission on Jira, it will not allow them to see the issues on conference. So we've got to be mindful when we are creating these filters uh, from Jira, we make sure that, you know, internet users have the right permissions to the filters and the project. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? Let me see. Go back and see. It's so hard to kind of keep be on track. All right. So I think you know we we kind of touched upon uh, knowing macros. Um, any any other specific things? Any use case? We can probably spend a couple of minutes to look around. Uh, you know the available macros and you know talk about them if you guys want to. Or else I can move to permissions. Uh, I have one question. I'll be checking this side. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's suppose uh, I am creating a, a ticket, a Jira ticket from the Confluence page, and uh, I want to map the description fields, or I want uh, more fields to be displayed there. So, how mm -hmm. uh, we can achieve this? Okay, so you want to include a Jira macro and show more columns in, in, into this one right here? Uh, not here, not in the filter. Let's. Uh, I am selecting some text, and uh, from there I am creating a Jira ticket, and there okay. I want to map the. Uh, uh, con uh, content with the uh, description field. Okay, so if you see right here, let me just publish this page right here. Right? So, so when I'm hovering this, you want to mm -hmm. when I create issue, you want to say what what part of it is is a description summary, right? Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah, there's not much of a control when you're doing it on here. So you can just simply it gives you pretty much everything that you have on here, but when you create a table, it will give us an option to, to use which column to be used. Like, let me just see if I can just create a table very quick in here and then add something. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, that's a good question. You know, I, and I can we take... display uh, uh, other fields, uh, more fields than uh, summary and description? No, no, no. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the macro limitation. That's all we can, we can do. And what if, if we uh, made the field mandatory? At uh, Jira, 
So oh, that's yeah. that's the reason, uh, Abhi, that it does not allow because every project might allowed. have different. Yeah. So summary is like by default the only mandatory field when you create a default project, right? So that's why Confluence gives you the option to select the summary. Whatever you select becomes the summary. So the issue can be created. And if you are not selecting summary, you would not be able to. But in the case, like if you are for in the create workflow of that project, you have let's say kind of like a status or a due date field as mandatory. There might you might run into issues. Yeah, I think that's a that's a definitely a good point. Uh, we never attempted to do that, but you know, let me test it out after it, and then I'll I'll post the I'll share the update with you. Uh, with I'll, I'll share the update with Megan or or with Sajid. You know, they can just post that to you. Yeah, but that's a that's a good point. Yeah, I never looked at it at that angle. Hi, Manohar. I'm on the side. I have a question. Uh, actually, uh, suppose if I have a space uh, having the n number of pages and uh, means child pages and sub child pages. Suppose someone commented over a uh, content, as you already mentioned that you tag the subject for the resolution of that uh, comment. Suppose someone mm-hmm. comment uh, over any text. Okay, on my sub child page. So I got uh, I, uh, how I got the notification. Suppose he forgot to mention my name, tagging my name, mm-hmm. because I don't think so. Uh, that watcher of that page got the notification because it did not uh, like modified that whole page. Just put a comment for a particular portion. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. How I got the notification because I am a space admin and I have a n number of pages. Uh, suppose uh, page uh, parent pages and n number of child and sub child pages. So someone go to my sub child page and comment over uh, there for a resolution and forget to tag anybody and just mm-hmm. comment. So how we get the notification as an admin of the space to resolve that particular portion? Mm. Abhi, the standard response there would be as an admin, you should be watching your space. So if you're watching yeah, your yeah, space, no, no, no. I think I don't think so. Watching, watching my space. Uh, if uh-huh. doesn't give any comment and saved as a last modified only, then I got the notification. Yeah. Notification. Yeah, yeah. Comments, yeah. comments. It's a because comments a didn't the... refresh the page, whole page. Not but here. You the have... comment. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, here. But if you don't have enabled the watcher, or if you have uh, the person has forgot to tag you, then I am sorry, dude. Don't have any option like Jira will yeah. or the conference page will not uh, give you some notifications, right? Yes. Yeah. It has to be tagged. You know, there is no way you can you know uh, expect exactly. it to send a notification. Uh, so yeah. Also, 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 also one yeah. more thing. So remember, in your profile, there's something called email settings. Where there are yes. bunch of things like auto watch. So if you select that, so any page or blog post that you create, you know any changes that goes there, you will get notification. And there are bunch of new options that you can change, which are like, which is the change content. If there are recommended updates, notification, my own actions. Those are also some things that you can personalize for your own profile. That means these things are, I think, uh, when uh, there is some changes within a page, means yeah. the whole space yeah, yeah, yeah. or even a sub child pages updated. Only then the confluence uh, are able to uh, send the notification. I don't think so. If I added someone, comment. yeah, comment. So let's no, forget to no. add. Yeah. So yeah, then it I, I don't think there is any. Yeah, I don't think there is any way uh, right now. Um, uh, definitely, it's, it's a worth worth a feature request. Okay, and uh, yeah. so if, if we can, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good point, right? You know, if you if we can kind of you know see a way, aggregate all the comments on the child pages into the master page, right? You know, but unfortunately for Confluence, everything is a page. You know, it's just a hierarchy, is a logical linking of it. But yes, yes. you know, but technically everything is a page for Confluence. You know, I I'm not sure whether any by just adding a child under a page, you know, there is a it doesn't treat a particular page as any any different or you know as a special page it doesn't do that unfortunately so i that is that could be one possible reason i could think of that you know there is no aggregation happening just like the way we see on the epic level you know when you go to an epic you you see some of the updates rolling up so you don't see that even happening here but it's a, it's a, it's a good point for sure yeah i think we can definitely put in a feature request and see if there is a way for us to monitor those untagged comments on child pages 
yeah you, you could it's, it's possible that some some documentation has like 10 15 20 30 child pages and you know sub pages in it and somebody must have added at the fourth level which you know it's stuck in yeah that's that's in that's my actual question yeah, that's absolutely yes. for, it yeah. totally makes sense you never thought about the use case but that's a definite uh, a worth feature yeah because uh, some uh, if the manager is going through all the pages uh, he might be forget to mention if i if he checking a lot of pages so might be forget to mention that particular name so might be there is a possibility that's why i'm asking and uh, right. uh, yeah for the abhishek question yeah you can use the issue collector within the confluence page where you can use the mandatory field of the uh, jira uh, it's a little bit uh, I think fulfill your requirement because if someone raised from uh, a ticket via conference, then the issue collector is the best option for that. And uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, having also the limited fields. And generally, we use uh, those type of issue type which have a less of mandatory fields. Example for only the description and uh, the uh, summary. So we just uh, focus on the resolving the issue, not for all those functionality, what's the application services and what's Correct. the priority you are looking for. That's the uh, basic uh, thing, issue collector. You may use within the Confluence page via using the HTML macro, actually. Thanks, thanks. Uh, all right. yeah. No worries, yeah, I appreciate it. All right, so we'll, we'll quickly jump into the permissions in here and then quickly take a look at the permissions, what we got. So if you are an admin, a space admin, uh, only then you would get this option right here, which is space settings or else you wouldn't see this at all. Uh, so once you have uh, that particular permission, you can hit that, you will land on the space settings permission right here. If you quickly, uh, I'm, I'm going to pretty much kind of not go into other specific areas right now, but you know, I'll go into the permission straight away. So here you can see there are uh, two sets of permissions that, that you know, uh, two ways you can provide a permission to anybody groups and individuals, right? So we, we highly recommend to anybody that, you know, use groups because that's the only way you can control uh, your permissions and, you know, how providing an access to it. So like, you know, assume that you have an onboarding page uh, which you want to give access to everybody by default. So the way you could do is, you know, you could use the default uh, license group, which is Confluence Users Group as a you know read only permission on this particular page and then you can just you know continue to whenever you onboard a user just add the user to a conference user group they'll automatically get permission to that particular space so here even at the permission level you can see you can kind of pretty much allow them to view all the pages and then you can allow them to add or delete a particular page that means you know write permissions into the space and then you can allow them to add or delete blogs add or delete comments attachments restrictions and mail. So, you know, the last three portions is pretty much reserved for uh, most of the times for admins. You wouldn't want to allow standard users to, to do that. So you can see that that's how this particular page also is set up. Um, and then, you know, you can, if you want to edit a particular permissions, hit on edit permissions, and then you can add another group here. Uh, hey, Manohar, just one mm -hmm. quick thing. We have uh, only 10 minutes uh, left for the- Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh God. I thought it's it's for one and a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No problem. So in a, in a just you know you can pretty much control who gets access to a space uh, and you know who who get even after giving a access to a space what they can do within the space you can control right from here and then uh, you can see some of the uh, public documentation like you know let me just quickly go to this right here so this is a public documentation that you see. It's been exposed to external users. You know, you can do that. A lot of companies use conference as a product documentation. So, you know, you can just mark this as an anonymous space, pretty much, you know, allow everybody to view the space. So they don't have to log into a confluence and access it. That means, you know, without having uh, to provide, use up any licenses, you can still expose some information to external users. Again, you know, you gotta be very careful. Whatever you put out there, it's accessible on the web. So any content that you put on it is accessible by everybody. So that's at the uh, permissions at the space level. Um, again, one definite um, caution that we would always do is always use groups to control the permissions to the spaces, right? And then um, you can, once you do the permissions, you can override um, to a certain extent, like, you know, yes, you, you have given everybody across the organization to view this page, but there may be certain pages that I would be drafting or developing and which doesn't require, you know, everybody to see it. So I can just come to that specific page. I can then just lock it. I use this restrictions button in here. And then I can either allow 
everybody to view, anybody to kind of just view it and then only some people can edit it or only some people can view and edit it you can just pretty much use one of these things so this would literally kind of take this particular uh, page out of the tree itself they would not see if i'm just putting this particular permission in here so they, they would not see that this decision lock page is available here if you apply that permission on a parent page you technically kind of you know virtually hiding everything inside that particular child page also you know everything underneath would automatically be hidden from the user so this is something which you need to keep in mind uh, whenever you are applying restrictions so especially during drafting some pages you want to expose it you can always create a separate tree for that and then you can put all your draft pages there as a space admin or the collaborators or as the contributors and then continue to promote those pages into additional uh, you know open open uh, parent pages you know if you want to expose them to the rest of the group all right so i want to take a quick break in here and um, really kind of you know show you guys how atlassian also uses it you know this is one of our internal portal partner portal where you know we get to see all the updates and you know all the program information there's a little more formatting has been done here some images you know some icons been added with you know links uh, to them and then you know they published a lot of you know blogs for us which you know we get to read and then the public documentation which atlassian has is also uh, a confluence interestingly uh, you know it was pretty much a standard confluence earlier but they kind of promoted it to be uh, you know more uh, you know they've been using scroll viewpoint as an add on to kind of you know uh, expose this content so it's a, it's a very intuitive tool so you can obviously kind of go check it out you've been you must be on this pretty much day in day out you can realize that this is again confluence and it's powered by a scroll viewpoint so scroll viewpoint is is from k15t guys and you know just go check out their uh, apps as well so if you would like to uh, explore something so you can kind of literally convert your confluence into help center using some of these uh, additional add ons and this is the classic case you know you can you can you can use uh, atlassian documentation if you want to present uh, confluence potential to internal stakeholders or somebody you're trying to sell this internally to your managers or you know to somebody this is a place to go you know nothing nothing can beat atlassian documentation itself uh, when it comes down to confluence all right uh, and apart from that you also have you know additional options to theme your confluence pages like you know you want to convert this into more of a intranet kind of a thing more intuitive stuff you know you can use refine wiki uh, to kind of you know make it look uh, more branded you know fit into your you know companies you know uh, format or theming and you know make it much more intuitive so that you know people would consume the content more easily like you know this will allow us to expose pages or spaces you know into a much more better way like you know you can restrict particular panels uh, that means you know uh, if you if you want to kind of you know uh, have different sections for different personas uh, when they log into confluence you know managers should see pages or uh, you know spaces from one particular category and you know the developers support to see more developer centric content you can always use this and these are all um, you know public documentation you can see this you know i don't have to log into this but still i'm able to access pretty much everything that i can see in here whereas this one is a closed one i have to log in to access this one in this particular uh, instance all right so uh, i think uh, I missed out on the calendars because I realized that I don't have calendar installed on it. Uh, but I will share some links later on. We can always take an offline questions if anybody needs anything, right? So let me go back to see. Okay, hosting, uh, pricing, and uh, other topics, right? So we got four minutes. So Atlassian allows. Um, let me just quickly go in here. Dot com. So you have uh, three different ways of uh, you know deploying uh, your confluence. You know, obviously, cloud is the, the one of the most easiest uh, ones. You could just quickly go in and get your confluence within a few minutes. You know, you you don't even have to do anything. And with with the recent announcement, like you know, everybody can get a free free version uh, without having to spend any money whatsoever. Right. So uh, let me just quickly button here. You get three different options: server, data center, cloud. Cloud, I already spoke, so you don't have any any strings attached. You can just pay pay per view, uh, kind of you know, just just you are ten users, just get it, and then you know you want to continue to expand. You can do it on a monthly basis, or you can convert your you know subscription into an annual subscription, so that you can get more benefits on on you know if you know that that's 
you know, I'm going to use 100 users throughout. Just go ahead and convert it into annual. You will just instantly save two months of your uh, overall, um, you know, pricing. Server and data center are for more for those companies who wants to have more control on where the data sits. So you can, you know, create your own internal uh, infrastructure and host a single node confluence. Or if your if your company is big, you know, if you want to cater to uh, you know, folks demographically kind of, you know, uh, distributed across the globe. You want to kind of create multi-cluster environment and then, you know, you can just use load balancers to really kind of, you know, divert the traffic between, you know, each different region, you know, gives you more predictability and data center comes with whole lot of features, uh, you know, not just the uh, multi-node, but, you know, there's a ton of other features you can explore that. And the pricing definitely varies for each of them. Uh, cloud Atlassian has been pushing cloud first approach and then you know we've been seeing so much demand for uh, conference cloud and then obviously data center is the next uh, possible enterprise option that is out there which we highly recommend for larger organizations um, you know feel free to uh, check check out the pricing you know everything is listed on Atlassian website and the list price is pretty much standard for everybody all right uh, again, server server is a perpetual license. You know, once you buy a server license for the very first year, uh, maintenance is included in it. But thereafter, if you want to, if you, you know, if you want to continue to use the pages without having to access new patches, new updates, new upgrades, you can just continue to use it. You will not lose anything. Data center is a subscription model, just like the cloud. You have to continue to pay every year to continue to use data center licenses uh, on your instance. And cloud is obviously a subscription model that you can use on a monthly basis or annual basis. All right, so we got one minute. I have two questions. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so my first question is, uh, can I use Jira groups in Confluence to give the permission? Yes, the groups are uh, common. Let me just quickly go in there and show you. Just now I was trying to do that. You can expose those permissions in here too. And see this, the groups are available for you to add as well. Okay. Yep. All right, my second question is, uh, if somebody can, uh, if any one of you can recommend a good gadget where I can get a release, but I know it's not related to Confluence, but it's related to Jira, where I can get a release burn down chart, committed versus delivered, basic sprint metrics, a good gadget. You have the version report available. It's a gadget, let me just quickly go in here. Can you point me on the external content? Okay. Yeah, you have the version report, chart, obviously. There but actually is a yeah. chart by natively, which is called release burn down. Have you tried looking at that? On yeah, I've month. Yes. So what's happening is the release burn down. It's pretty much what we are working on. So number of teams, number of projects will be there in that uh, same release. So I need to have a separate filter and I want to just track what is the progress for just particular one client. So I need a gadget. So the one which is there in Jira, it's a little bit uh, pretty tight, no limited. I want some gadget for, so that I can use it. Maybe in an external gadget, Third party yeah. So, yeah, maybe you know you gotta probably look into additional add-ons to allow you to do much more reporting. Uh, two two specific uh, two uh, you know add-ons that we uh, largely use with our clientele is Easy BI is one, which allows you to kind of do a lot of BI specific things on it. And other one is uh, Visual Scripts, which is from Smadra. Uh, we use both of them pretty heavily. They got some good uh, you know good uh, chats and gadgets that you know that you can just uh, uh, leverage. So Smadra, just look for that visual scripts. Uh, if you if you guys want, I can just connect you guys with uh, one of the product teams there. You can just get a demo from them. 
they are lovely people so mm-hmm. we are partnered up with them and then you know we can tell them to do a demo they would be happy to do that sure so one is easy bi what is the other one visual scripts visual scripts okay thank you i'll just give you the all right any other questions guys Just put this into the chat so that you can uh, get it. So, um, you know. Thank you, uh, guys. If you have any question, we can do it like for one or two minutes more. Otherwise, we have our WhatsApp channels and the uh, community community space where you can post your questions or connect directly to Manohar. Uh, on that note, Manohar, thank you for taking out your time and uh, doing this wonderful demo with us. And uh, it's so amazing how uh, in- integrated these two tools are, and this is so uh, very good use cases. Thank you so much. Hey, hey uh, thank how? Thank you so much. Guys. Yeah. How can I be part of your uh, WhatsApp group? WhatsApp group? Yeah. Sure. You... Uh, if yeah. you have fill in your attendance sheet, I will send an email to everybody on the list and share all the details of the groups and uh, the places you can connect with us. I have not filled any sheet. I just uh, saw it on the group uh, and joined. I'll just share it again. Go ahead, fill okay. your details. Uh, your email address will do. Okay, you all right. Share that. I will just quickly add you on the list and share all that details with you. Okay, yeah? thank you. That's the document I've shared. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Sachin Shrivastava. Yeah, Sachin. Okay, I'll remember you. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. Can you uh, add me as well, Ajit? Well? Sorry. Uh, sorry, can you add me also to? Sorry, sure, to sure. Everybody who has filled the attendance sheet, I will share the details. <laughs> Uh, this is the document where you can uh, fill your uh, attendance. The link is there on the chat. Oh. Yeah, it's a okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank. You. Huh? Okay. Also, I will do that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I would like to, you know, announce an exciting news as well. Uh, people who are regular to our meetups and uh, they take out time every week and thank you so much and you make this place as awesome as it is. So we have decided to give away some swag codes. Uh, it would be random, so you know, don't hate me if you don't get it. You'll get it next time for sure. Uh, I'll be giving away some of the uh, swag codes to the people who have filled the attendance sheet. Saying it again, I will not remember uh, all of you, so please do fill in your attendance sheet. And uh, for Manohar, we also have one uh, good swag code. You can awesome. swag code is actually attend uh, uh, Atlassian goodies that you can order from. Uh, Great. Obviously, you know about it. So just go I'll, ahead. I'll get my uh, I'll get my attention key next time. Oh, yes, do it. <laughs> go ahead. Great. Uh, thank you so much for having me here, uh, Meghna, Sajid, uh, Deepi. Appreciate you guys all the work that you guys are doing to share the knowledge. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manohar. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank so have much. a good day. Have a good so day. All have a great rest hey. of the day and Bye. have a good Sunday. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.